Okay, so here we are with Dolores, uh, who was born in 1928, and she's going to tell us a little bit about how to live through hard times. Um, she lived through the tail end of the Great Depression, and then uh, through World War II. So she's going to just share with us a little bit about how you can make it uh, on less. Okay, one way you can make it on less is to walk everywhere. We did not have a car. So and it was a mile and a half to uh, downtown area and a mile and a half to my high school. And I walked both ways. I don't remember taking a bus in the winter only twice when it was way below zero because you just learned to suck it up and get out there and walk. And um, one thing too, we had a, about entertainment, we didn't have much entertainment. I know we'd go to the movies, uh, maybe once a week go to the movies, and they were handing out, for the adults, they were handing out dishes back then. And you'd go to the Saturday night and they would give dishes to people that came. I forget how it went because I never, my grandmother never went. But another thing, back then too, you would buy a box of Rinso or some other uh, product that you wash the clothes with and there would be towels in there and I remember that's um, uh, towels or dishcloths or washcloths and uh, that was a good thing to do because you were doubling your money and I remember at church like I said we go to morning church evening church and they used to have a box lunch at the church and all the women would bring a lunch and their best dessert and then the men would uh, wager, uh, now how, how do I put it, they'd show the, the lunch and they wouldn't say who made it and they'd say, oh this lunch in a box, this looks like a good lunch. And so some man in the congregation would say, I'll pay five dollars for that, well probably it was 25 cents back then. And then he'd have to sit with that woman that made that lunch. So it was sort of a, an odd thing, I remember my grandmother was having a fit because she thought the wrong man would get her lunch and she was a widow and she'd have to sit with some jerk. Kind of a social Social uh, thing, yeah. Social. Okay, um, cardboard. Um, back then, if you didn't have the money to resole your shoes with the resole kit, I remember as a child, um, my shoes, I was always wearing my shoes out and there would be a hole in the bottom of my shoe. so. My grandmother discovered that shredded wheat biscuits came in a square box and between the layers of the biscuits they had these pieces of cardboard that were just big enough to put in your shoe. I would say like you have a Dr. Scholl's insert now you can buy. And so we'd put those in our shoes and keep our shoes, wear our shoes as long as we could. Otherwise you'd have a hole and you'd be... Otherwise you'd have the hole. And I remember one time I was walking with my brother out on sort of a, not a country road, but it was a road that, it was sort of country, walking along and all of a sudden I stopped and I said, Clyde, there's something cold underneath my foot. And I reached out my foot and I was standing on a dead snake. <laughs> I never forgot that. And oh, because the, the shoe had worn clear through, the hole had worn clear through the cardboard. So from then on I was very careful that the cardboard had several layers in it. Um, another thing for entertainment, we used to go down to the town square. Um, you remember the town square had a uh, fountain and fish in there and at night the fountain was different colors, not like Buckingham, uh, what do you call it, the big one in Chicago, but it was just a little one, but it would change colors and we watched the fish going around swim in there and we just sit and, and look at people going by or you would go downtown and you'd walk up and down the street the three three blocks on each side that was the center of the town and uh, look in the store windows and watch the people go by today like do people today. go to the mall and watch the people yeah. go by or we watch yeah. television shows yeah. about people watch television and for me a real treat when I was in high school my, my grandmother was very poor, so I remember I got 25 cents a week. And um, I could buy, I took a, a sack lunch, and then I would buy milk to go with it. And I remember a friend of mine who had more money than me, we'd walk home, we'd go back and forth to school together. She lived in the next block. 
and every so often she'd stop in uh, the soda fountain place and she'd get a uh, a Coke. I remember I liked a chocolate Coke or something, cherry Coke, and she'd buy it for me and that was a real treat. Like I say also, if you had a bag of potato chips once every year, it was really something. Or ice cream, a pint of ice, you bought ice cream by half pints, I think. And yet, it, uh, another thing, at family reunions, we, li we went out to the country, a relative lived out in the country, and we would get the, uh, they would get the uh, ice cream maker out, the kind that, with the handle that you turn the handle and you freeze the ice cream and we'd make that and that was a real treat too. But that wasn't very often. Okay, well let's uh, call that part one and we'll Now you want to go to the cost, cost of living. Sure, let's do that in part two.